Reading research papers is essential for every engineer out there. It just elevates your game. I read 50 papers every year and in this video, I will talk about the process that I follow to discover new papers, read them, understand them and most importantly, remember them. So let's jump right into it. I have been reading papers regularly since early 2017 and I just love them. It has definitely deepened my understanding of the subject and I'm fascinated by databases, storage engines, advanced algorithms and distributed systems. So most of the papers I read and I post about and I talk about, they would all belong to one of these domains. Occasionally I do cheat and read some other random stuff, but it's still fun to dive deep into this thing. So step number one, how do I discover new papers? The three sources that I use to find and discover new papers are Google Scholar. That's my ultimate website to go through. Google Scholar is just a website for research papers. You'll find everything around research papers there. So what I typically do is I just search for the things that I'm intrigued by. Let's say columnar database. I just go there and search columnar database. And because Google has this really nice ranking, it very high chance a good quality paper would always come in the top three or four results. I go through them, find topic interesting, find title interesting. I start reading it. I don't put a lot of thought. Hey, is this the best paper that I should read? I just start doing it. Right? So that is first source. Second source is Hacker News. Hacker News is a great place where a lot of great engineers put out things that they find interesting. So I follow that. I, if I uncover or discover some paper, I go through them. Right? So that just adds to my bucket list. The third thing is when someone shares something on social network, like on LinkedIn, you see people sharing the research papers that they are reading. I, that becomes my source of information that, Hey, this is, this sounds interesting. Let me add it to my to-do list. Right? So there are, and plus on top of these three, and if you're just getting started, there are so many people who have created top hundred papers to read, top 10 papers to read, top 50 papers to read. Just follow one of them. Just follow. You don't have to follow the best person or the best list or this, given that you are starting, just go for it. Just keep your life simple rather than over complicating it and just wasting time figuring out, hey, is this the best one to read or not? Fine. But in general, I would recommend follow the right kind of people on social network. You'll become better engineer hundred percent. Okay. That was the first part about discovering the new paper. Suppose you found, you now have a bunch of paper, which one to start to be honest. Pick anyone and start any title that you find interesting, that you find amusing, just start any title, any paper that looks enticing, go for it. So instead of waiting to find the best paper that would match your skills and this and that or relevance and all, just pick one and get started. Do not overthink and waste time because why, <laughs> why, why to waste time? Just keep on thinking that, Hey, is this the best one? Is this relevant one? How will I use it at my job? Because reading research papers is fun. It just broadens all of your horizon right? and it's fun to do so. Okay. Now, supposedly I, someone posted a top hundred papers list and I started going through them. One of the title excited me. Let's say it's called Google file system. I'm like, Hey, this sounds fancy. It's a file system by Google should be interesting. Right? So now what is my, what is the step that I follow when I have narrowed down to a paper that I want to read? Let's say it's Google file system. Now, how do I go about it? My process is three iteration. I always, at least on any paper that I'm picking, I'm iterating it thrice. In the first iteration, it's more about skimming. So what I do is I download a paper, simple, and I open it in my favorite PDF reader. So let's say I use Adobe Acrobat reader, right? On Adobe Acrobat reader, I just open the paper that I'm interested by. Let's say it's Google file system. And my first iteration of this paper is all about just reading the paper line, like just skimming through the paper, not even reading them, but just skimming through the paper so that I understand what exists. For example, in this paper, I would just go and say, oh, abstract, we have designed this, this, this. But I would read these lines very quickly, this entire paper, which is uh, 15 pages long. I would read it very quickly one after another without trying to understand a lot of stuff. This way, what happens is because the papers are typically long and dense by skimming through it, 
इट हेल्प मी फॉर्म बिगर डॉट्स इन माई हेड दैट हे दिस इज द ओवरऑल थिंग ऑफ द पेपर दीज आर दर्ड्स दैट आई एम फाइंडिंग फॉर द चंक सर्वर्स एंड देन देर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड नेम स्पेस एंड सम ए पी आई इज रिटर्न ओवर ह्यूर सम सिंगल मास्टर्स एंड देन सम मेटा डेटा सम चंक साइज सम इन मेबी डेटा स्ट्रक्चर्स राइट सो आई रीड दिस एंटायर पेपर लाइन बाय लाइन बट विदाउट ट्राइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड इट इट जस्ट हेल्प मी फॉर्म अ रियली गुड चंक ऑफ बिग डॉट्स इन माई हेड right now why i am doing this when i am skimming through the paper helping me form the big dots in my head it helps me understand the overall theme of the paper and the things that i could expect from it right now when i am skimming when i am skimming through the paper i would definitely highlight the things that i find interesting but not every single line of it but things that i found hey this is very interesting and i should definitely dive deep into this i just keep marking keep highlighting those things over here right this is first pass where i went through the entire paper line by line but not trying to understand every line forming broad dots in my head right this is done this typically takes me roughly 2 hours at max to go through it because it's just about reading it and not understanding it 2 hours good enough time for me to read this entire 15 page thing right okay that's the first thing skimming highlighting the basic stuff not entirely not going in detail not trying to make sense of things that you are reading then the second iteration is where you read the paper thoroughly now this is the most intense pass of the paper now here you have to read every single line and try to grasp the meaning of it how it fits into the big scheme of things highlight every single key detail that you can for example when i am reading it the the second part i literally go through every single line trying to understand why it is being done how it is being done how it fits into the big scheme of things and i highlight very aggressively on the things that interests me you can see the density of my highlights over here right i just do that i try to make sense of every single thing out there right this way what happens is the big dots that were formed after iteration 1 now they are now densely connected with each other because now i'm trying to make sense of it right and it helps me and now because the broad dots were formed already in my head it is very easy for me to recall that hey something like this let's say i was reading something and some chunk server thing is mentioned i would know that there is a already a big section about chunk server later right it just helps me with that that hey something like this already exists i would be more familiar when i'm diving deep into this so i read this thing line by line in the second iteration and try to make sense of it right and this is the most intense it takes me one day or two day to do so then comes the third iteration the final pass now what happens is in the first iteration we formed broad dots in my head some of them were connected with the second thing we found very granular details a lot of dots were formed and most of them were connected but at this stage because you are reading a because research papers are dense and when you are reading a research paper you think that you have understood it but in reality there is still some gap in your understanding which is what gets resolved in the third pass that i do in that third pass what i do is i go through that paper once again but this time i prepare notes handwritten notes handwritten notes of every single thing that i read this and i create notes such that i am teaching it i don't want you to teach or uh, sorry i want you to read but i don't recommend you to do it for every paper but if you can prepare handwritten notes as if you are teaching it to someone now what happens with that is it challenges your understanding so with this google file system paper i will give you a very practical example of that when i was reading this google file system paper two passes were done i had this highlights handy when i started going through it i started preparing notes i reached to a point where i said hey i don't know what happens after that so i read till almost 40% of the paper but i said i thought i understood it but i don't know how this write is happening so then what i did is i started from the bottom and i started basically covering the easy sections of it around durability and checksums and what not and i came from bottom up to that point now what happened is at that point i don't know how these two dots are connected now 
So then I spent time reading that same part again and again and again and again until I built a complete understanding of it. So if I would not have done this third iteration where I prepare this handwritten notes as if I'm teaching it to someone, what would happen is I would think that I know stuff. But in reality, if I'm explaining this paper to someone or if I'm talking about this paper and someone asked me that question, I would definitely not have an answer. I thought I understood it, but in reality, I didn't. So third pass is really important because in the second pass, a lot of dense components were built, but there are still some strands which are not connected. The third pass where you are preparing the handwritten notes and trying to teach, if you are doing that good enough, even if you don't, just pretending that you are teaching helps. Even if you don't want to do that, just preparing handwritten notes also help. But be true to yourself and say that, do you really understand it or are you just doing it for the sake of it, right? But be very true to yourself. That's the most important thing, right? And this is the third pass where now any two dots that remained unconnected now gets connected and now it becomes a strongly connected graph in my head. And that's exactly what we want when we are reading research paper because research papers are mind-blowingly awesome, right? So highly recommend you to do, do that. This is exactly what I do behind the scenes when I'm reading a research paper. Now, you don't have to do all the three things for all the papers that you are reading. Some papers are more exciting than others. Some papers interest you more than others. So it's okay to skip after first pass because in first pass you would be, in case you don't find it interesting, in the first pass itself where you have not spent enough time, you can realize that, hey, I'm not uh, excited after reading this. Skip that. In second pass also, you still have broad idea, but you don't want to dive deeper because it's not worth your time. Skip it, right? Everything is optional. But the thing is that if you are really want to dive deep, then all the three pass, at least three passes are essential, right? And understand this, this is going to be a tough journey reading a research papers. It's quite an exhaustive thing, but worth it. Trust me, it, it just elevates your game, right? Now, what I do is whenever I read a paper, I just, the annotated version of it just gets added to my website. And you can find it on alpetani.me slash paper shelf. Right? Here you'll find all the papers, like all the good papers that I read and I highly recommend everyone to read right there, right? Because this just elevates your game, right? And now you click on any one of them. Let's say I click on the Google file system paper. You can find the link of that paper, the annotated version of it here. It just gives you, it just, because you're putting it out on the website, it just makes you feel good that yeah, you have this report. Now, if I, this is like last one year's thing that I read. And when I go through this, I find, I feel proud that I've read so many papers and I have built decent understanding of most of them, right? Highly, highly, highly recommended to do this, but trust me, it's a tough process. It's overwhelming. It's exhausting, but worth it, right? 100% recommended. And yeah, this is how, this is what my process of reading a research paper looks like. Discovering three sources, then while I just pick one and just get started with it. Then the next thing is about three iterations. First iteration is skimming. Second iteration is intensely going through it, trying to make sense of every single line. Third is making handwritten notes of it as if I'm trying to teach, at least make handwritten notes of it. This way you would have a complete understanding of the thing that you're reading rather than you thinking that you understood it, but in reality you didn't. And yeah, this is my three, this is my, this is the step that I follow. And again, all the three phases are optional. If any, and there are hundreds of papers that are discarded after the first pass itself, because I, I thought it is interesting, but it's either out of my league or I'm bored by it or it, it's okay. Okay. Right. In either case, it's okay to skip. Right. But when you're investing time into reading one, ensure that you are thoroughly excited by it. Right. And yeah, this is all what I wanted to cover this one. This is my, this is the process that I follow to read papers. I hope you found it interesting. Hope you found it amusing. This is going to be tough, but worth it. Put in that effort and I'm really excited to see you all share the papers that you are reading and making sense out of it. Super. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a ton.